If you want to hit them where it hurts, you got to go to the heartland. And that's exactly what the DNC is doing with its anti-Trump Vance ad campaign. And this campaign goes well beyond social media attack ads. They're flying banners over college football games. Last week, banners were flown over football games taking place at the University of Michigan, University of Georgia, University of Wisconsin, and Penn State. In Michigan, they're leaning into that Michigan-Ohio rivalry by reminding attendees that J.D. Vance is from the wrong state. The banner said, J.D. Vance, Hart, Ohio State, and Project 2025. Overall, they made sure that people knew that Vance and Trump, despite Trump's protestations and denials, are fully behind Project 2025 and the Heritage Foundation's overall mission. But this isn't the first time the Trump campaign has been trolled by signage. George Conway's anti-psychopath PAC invested money into lucky number 13 billboards and had them placed right where Trump was sure to see them, right outside of his favorite and most frequented golf courses and outside of his home at Mar-a-Lago. One billboard placed outside of the Bedminster golf course had a picture of Trump's head inside like the hole, the golf hole. Is it just called the hole? And it reads, uh, attention Bedminster golfers, Trump cheats. And that's funny because Trump has been accused of cheating at golf in the past, just as he's been accused of cheating in business and in elections. Jeff actually watched me make a hole in one. Can you believe this? this is I actually said I was the best golfer of all the rich people, <laughs> that's, to, be, to be exact. And then I got a hold of it. So it was sort of cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Trump's shooting right now. Let's see if we can hit the green. Oh, he shanked it. <laughs> Oh my God, I got that on video. One sports writer, Rick Riley, said that Trump cheats, quote, like a mafia accountant and that he will, quote, do anything to win. This includes driving a turbocharged golf cart that's three times as fast as a normal golf cart so he can move around the course faster than everyone else. That way he can move his ball and his opponent's balls around on the green before he gets caught. We are literally chasing Donald Trump in a golf cart. There we go. Riley recounted an incident in L.A. He said, One time in L.A., Trump was playing $50 a hole with these three guys. He hits it in the pond, they see the splash, but by the time they get there, the ball is in the middle of the fairway, and they're like, what the F, Donald? And then he goes, it must have been the tide. Riley also claimed that Trump has never truly won a tournament on a golf course that he didn't own and operate. According to Riley, Trump told him, anytime I buy a new course, I play the first round all by myself, and then I declare myself the club champion. He also said that he's seen Trump win tournaments that Trump did not even attend. And as for what kind of man would go out of his way to cheat at golf, Riley explained, I've always said golf is like bicycle shorts. It reveals a lot about a guy. And what it reveals about this guy is that he cannot lose. He has to win and he will do anything to cheat. And I know because I played golf with him and he took seven mulligans. He took a gimme chippin. I've never heard of a gimme chippin. Me neither, but I don't golf. Riley insists that he doesn't know much about politics. He only knows about golf, but character is character and Trump cheating at golf is in line with what we know about the way he conducts himself in other areas of his life. But let's get back to his campaign. Actually, let's talk about his running mate, J.D. Vance, for a minute. Director and beloved Richie Cunningham, Ron Howard, is acknowledging that he, unfortunately, played a pretty big role in thrusting J.D. Vance into the national spotlight. Howard directed the movie adaptation of Vance's book, The Hillbilly Elegy. According to Howard, Vance wasn't interested in pursuing a political career at the time. Howard said he was surprised and disappointed at Vance's partnership with Trump, and he had this to say about his interactions with the politician. We didn't talk a lot of politics when we were making the movie. I was interested in his upbringing and that survival tale. That's what we mostly focused on. But that was then. Based on the conversations that we had during that time, I just have to say I'm very surprised and disappointed by much of the rhetoric that I'm reading and hearing. People do change, and I assume that's the case. Now, I never saw the movie, but I'm assuming Howard has more than one regret about making the film. The movie did earn two Academy Award nominations, but it also earned the director 
a Razzie nomination for Worst Director. All of this was just two years before Vance secured Trump's endorsement for Senate in 2022, and then he won that race. Now, Howard wants everyone to know that despite his past affiliation with the VP candidate, he is not down with Vance or Trump. He said, There's no version of me voting for Donald Trump to be president again, whoever the vice president was. Given the experience that I had then, five, six years ago, I'd say that I've been surprised, but it's not really about a movie made five or six years ago. It is, but we need to respond to what we're seeing, hearing, feeling now, and vote responsibly, whatever that is. I do like that he said something because while I really don't expect much from celebrities, I wouldn't be disappointed to hear that Ron Howard was a fan of a guy like J.D. Vance, particularly this version of J.D. Vance that we have all come to know. For Donald Trump's presidential campaign, running mate J.D. Vance has proven to be a bigger liability by the day. The New Republic headline, Trump's J.D. Vance pick just got even worse. Daily Mail, former Trump aides claim Donald Trump is in meltdown, so is lighting up the campaign because of a terrible decision. The backlash against Vance, though, is giving us a glimpse into what a future may look like without Donald Trump leading the Republican Party. By now, you've all probably heard about Vance's childless cat lady comments, but recently the Harris campaign unearthed another older video with Vance echoing the same sentiments. Watch. Right, there are just these basic cadences of life that I think are really powerful and really, really valuable when you have kids in your life. And the fact that so many people, especially in America's leadership class, just don't have that in their lives, you know, I, I worry that it makes people more sociopathic and ultimately our whole country a little bit less, uh, a, a less mentally stable. And of course, you talk about going on Twitter. Final point I'll make is you, you go on Twitter and almost always the people who are most deranged and most psychotic are people who don't have kids at home. The people who are most psychotic and deranged are the people who don't have kids at home. J.D., tell that to families and people with young children who don't have child care. I guarantee you those people are more psychotic. Anyway, the larger point is that J.D. Vance is clearly out of touch and despises people who don't have children. That is really weird. And on Fox News the other day, weekend host Trey Gowdy tried to do some damage control for Vance's childless cat lady comments. Watch. I've heard from many women, m m most of whom are conservative, and they would very much like to vote for President Trump and you, but, Senator, they are disappointed. So nuns and priests aside, do you agree that there are people who very much love this country and are invested in its future, but they also happen to be childless? Oh, of course I believe that, Trey. And if you look at the full context of what I said, it's very clear the Democrats have tried to take this thing out of context and blow it out of proportion, which is what they always do, Trey, because they don't have an agenda to run on themselves. The Democrats don't have a pro-family agenda? Early childhood education, paid family leave, free meals for school children, universal pre-K, extending child tax credits. Many Republicans oppose all of that. Now, as for Vance claiming that Democrats are taking his childless cat lady's comment out of context, consider this. Vance's own wife told Vanity Fair, my husband only meant to insult people who actively choose not to have kids, not people who are trying but are unsuccessful. So according to Vance and his wife, people who choose not to have children are deviants and should be treated as less than human and less than citizens. That's extreme. And the irony about Vance insisting that Democrats take things out of context is that Republicans use conspiracy theories and lies to get elected. Donald Trump said the Harris rallies in Michigan were the result of artificial intelligence. Trump and other Republicans say the 2020 election was fraudulent. Meanwhile, Republicans insist climate change is a hoax because that's what the GOP donors, the energy companies, want people to think while the GOP turns over environmental policy to corporations that pollute our planet. Reality seems like a stretch for Republican lawmakers, so they lie and mislead in order to help the GOP grab or maintain political power. And J.D. Vance is right there in the middle of it with his wackadoodle claims that people without children are more deranged and psychotic. The rhetoric from J.D. Vance comes across as creepy and harsh, and that's because J.D. Vance and other Republicans cannot hold a candle to Donald Trump's charisma. Trump's huge personality makes frightening rhetoric and policies humorous and sometimes entertaining. Trump is a fun guy, say his supporters, so there's nothing wrong with Trump saying things that are politically incorrect. But J.D. Vance, Ron DeSantis, and other Republicans who may follow the Trump blueprint do not have the Trump charisma and charm. 
In fact, Donald Trump has proven that in order to be successful, MAGA depends on his charisma and a certain level of authenticity that J.D. Vance, Ron DeSantis, and Ted Cruz could never dream of having. In Trump's first administration, he had a vice president and Mike Pence, whose role was to counterbalance Trump's whims and provide some governmental stability. Pence seemed more level-headed, which balanced out the Trump craziness. But now, Donald Trump doesn't have or want that counterbalance anymore. And people who were desensitized to Trump's extreme ideology are seeing it in spades in J.D. Vance.